Hello and welcome to Truck World TV from Junction 18 Services here at T-Bay. And remember, this is the only UK TV show dedicated to commercial vehicles. Now, on this week's programme, we've got Tim's test of the new Renault T-Cab. And we've also got a report on the recent CM Live event from Millbrook. But to start us off this week, we're paying homage to the trailer. And now we view the unsung hero of the commercial vehicle industry. That's right, because when you come to services like this, you'll often hear truckers being asked what cab do you have? What engine's in it? What horsepower have you got? And we think that's a bit odd. Because when you consider two thirds of the goods used in this country are delivered by a commercial vehicle, well, they don't stick them in the cab, they stick them in the trailer or in the cargo space at the back. Yeah, so address the balance, we thought we'd go to Cartwright Trailers in Altrincham, Cheshire, where we're going to have a look at all the effort that's put in to actually making a trailer from the ground up. For more than 60 years, Cartwrights have been building trailers. And here at the 38-acre Altrincham head office, the 550-strong team also deal with administration, sales, leasing and servicing, and of course, all of the engineering and design works that go into the manufacturing process. Well, this is where it all begins. Well, I suppose it doesn't really begin here. It begins with the customer saying, yes, I want that trailer. But because the order is nearly always bespoke, the job of this team to turn that specification into something they can actually build. Our first point is we do a contract review. As part of what we're trying to do is create the trailer around their products so that we're, we're designing around their products and their operation as a whole. Uh, we'll do sales drawings for the customers so the customers are involved right from the start to the finished products and they can review and change things as necessary. We use 3D software to help design and we also use things for section modulus and stress calculations which is done in the 3D package. Well from the relative tranquility of the design area to here, the nitty gritty part, the shop floor where the build really starts. Raw materials, we take huge sheets of steel, galvanised and stainless. This is a cut-off 6mm to give you an idea of the weight. And they don't just stick a set of wheels on these sheets, a bit more involved than that. The machine behind me, that's actually half a million pounds worth of laser cutter. Traditionally, the steel was formed using plasma punches, which still work great, but this machine is a lot more versatile and more importantly, it cuts to 0.1 of a millimetre tolerance. And also, your wastage, traditionally about 20%, this takes that down to 10. So it's super efficient, but more importantly, it makes sure that all the way down the shop floor, the plans, all the parts are gonna to fit together with super precision. And to ensure that everyone is working from the same plans, a master set travels with the trailer down the production line, from birth to rollout. And that's whether they're building a three and a half ton home delivery vehicle or a 44 ton double decker. Once the laser cutter has done its job on the main components, they then move to a traditional plasma punch, where additional mounting and fitting holes are cut, before the computer-controlled multi-access 250-ton forming press can get to work. All very high-tech, but it wasn't always this way, as Joint Managing Director John Cartwright explains. The business was uh, started by my grandfather and my father, uh, back in the early 50s, in an open-ended barn. Uh, you know, we know with a, like a dirt floor and uh, no doors on it. Right. Uh, not, not on this location, about five miles Can't away. do that now, Europe won't let you, will it? No, <laughs> exactly, yeah, you've got, you got, you know, heating regulations, yeah. so... Yeah, but, uh, so yeah, it's moved on. We've now got, what, nearly 600 people here. Um, you know, we're building, you know, some weeks we'll build 100 products in a week, yeah. so yeah, it's moved on. Yeah, you must have yeah. seen, and I guess the, the whole family must have seen a lot of, of, of changes in the mm. industry from when it started. That's right, yeah. The industry's um, condensed quite a bit. There's less manufacturers in it now. And it's a bit more service orientated rather than just manufacturing. People are looking at, you know, the whole uh, life of the product and how you look after the product and, you know, all those uh, additional things. Yeah. So you, you don't just make them, but you, you can rent them, you do the finance, you do the whole sort of a overused phrase, but a one-stop shop that's, for, for trailers. Exactly, yeah, that's what we try and... Uh, provide to the customers. And you must get so, some challenges because we believe obviously every trailer is bespoke to your customer. Do they sometimes come and want weird and wacky things that the, you have the, to make? Yes, you're quite right. We do, uh, yeah, mo most of the time you've probably done something similar before, but sometimes you have to, we have to sit back with the, the team. We've got some fantastic people here 
and you have to think, oh gee, how am I going to do this? Like, <laughs> so you've got to scratch your heads and, and come up with an idea and invariably, you know, unless it's impossible, uh, that, that's what we do. With all of the chassis components formed into shape, they are double checked against the plans and then it's time to fire up the welders. Well, this is where it all starts coming together now. Remember earlier we said the orders are virtually all bespoke. If you come back here next week and you'll find it's a completely different set of components. But I don't know about you, it doesn't work a trailer to me. It's only when we get to the next stage that you say, hey, I think I know what that is. And that's because it's in this part of the factory that the form chassis rails are married up with the cross members that will provide the strength and rigidity that the trailers need to perform properly. It's also here that the precision mounting brackets and the reinforcing plates are added to the rails to give an overall structure that is incredibly strong, yet for something that can be built to carry 44 tonnes, very precise. With between 70 and 140 trailers being produced a week here at Cartwrights, the engineers work in teams to ensure a smooth constant flow of products through the factory. Now I'm being a bit cautious here, getting quite close, but this is pretty much the last welding stage where the main chassis members are connected to the swan net. And from here, the whole structure is taken to be garnet blasted, which is an ecological form of shop blasting. It's then painted, and then the juicy bits are bolted on. I'm going to go before I catch fire. In the paint shop, several layers of primer and top coat are applied before the whole assembly is baked to give a highly durable yet smooth finish. Once the chassis is cured, the assembly is then ready for the mind-boggling amount of electrical and hydraulic cables to be installed. I'm sure you'll agree it's starting to look a little bit more like a trailer now. This is a section where they bring other components that are brought in from other manufacturers and bolt them onto the chassis, such as the landing legs, suspension systems, and axles as well. It's a little bit like a giant Meccano set, which is probably why I enjoy it so much. It's no surprise that a simple jack won't suffice to lift the massive structure off the ground. So a beam crane is used to raise the trailer completely to allow the engineers to fit the wheels in place. In this case, six of them for a three axle trailer. It's then conventional manpower that manoeuvres the trailer to the hydraulic and electrical inspection station where all of the systems are checked for safe operation. At this stage the trailer is roadworthy, but for most orders there's still a heck of a lot more work to do. As the reinforced bulkheads and floors have to be produced to size and then installed with thousands of bolts, screws and rivets. Now this trailer has not one but two reinforced floors, split load so you can mix and match your cargo but as you saw at the start of the shot, it's going to let the rain in at the minute because there's no roof on it. But not for long because that's what these guys are working on over here. Aluminium frame, all again machine fitted together and then a huge sheet, single sheet of aluminium rolled over the top. And then it's all finished, riveted, sealed, make it completely watertight and then after that, well, we're pretty much ready to go. I think the next step is, finally, a completely finished trailer. Well, it's almost there because there is one last stage. And it's one of the trickiest, and that's applying the company's logos to the finished trailer. Because the branding is usually so big, any errors will stand out a mile. So just as at the start of production, precision is the name of the game. With a final inspection carried out, the trailers are moved to the showroom for customer approval and then it's out on the road to deliver all manner of goods that our planet relies on. I'm genuinely amazed at how much work and craftsmanship go into putting one of these things together. And definitely next time I'm on the motorway passing a trailer, I'm not just going to see it as a faceless box with maybe my telly or fridge or vegetables in it, but as a real genuine piece of engineering. Well, that's amazing, really, when you look at that. There's so much effort required to actually manufacture a trailer. 
Yeah, it's not that far removed from the processes we saw at Tuve in Sweden, where Volvo are building a whole truck, you know, just for a, for a trailer. Well, that's it for part one. It's time for a short break. But when we come back, we'll have Tim's test of the new Renault T. We're also talking to drivers here at TV and asking them what floats the boat when it comes to their favourite truck. Welcome back to Truck World TV and each week on the series we are going to be having a road test of cabs from all the major manufacturers and lucky for us the place for most of those tests is Millbrook which I know is a fantastic facility for testing cars. No, it's a truck testing place. Well, they test cars there first and foremost. <laughs> no, they don't. They test trucks so it's a, there. They test vehicles. OK, so vehicle then. Testing. Yeah, a compromise. But there's lots of times where there's a total press lockdown and manufacturers do top secret testing there. And it's also the place where James Bond rolled his Aston Martin in that scene from Casino Royale. And it's where Tim and I went recently for CM Live. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. It's where transport operators get the chance to actually drive trucks away from the road, so it's on a test facility, and you can also go on-road and off-road. A key date in the calendar for the commercial vehicle world, Commercial Motor Live brings together the major players and influencers within the road transport industry to the exhibition halls and test facilities of Millbrook in Bedfordshire. As well as a chance to network with representatives from all of the key truck manufacturers, there was also seminars on Euro 6, cycle safety and road transport legal matters. The big draw, however, was the opportunity to get behind the wheel of the latest trucks to come to market from DAF, Isuzu, Iveco, Mercedes-Benz, Renault, Scania and Volvo. With CM Live taking over the whole site for the duration of the event, that meant that the demanding and exciting Millbrook test track was open to the truckers and hauliers to get an idea of what the latest machinery could do, but in the safety of a closed environment. With visitor numbers up by 75% over the previous year, the trucks from all manufacturers saw plenty of action. And not all of it was on the tarmac. The brilliant Millbrook facilities also include a full off-road course, allowing manufacturers with construction vehicles in their range to get their wheels dirty. It's not unusual to see military vehicles being put through their paces here, so it was certainly a good test for the commercials. As a unique event for the commercial vehicle industry, CM Live is certainly going from strength to strength and we look forward to covering the 2014 event in full later on in the year. Time now for the first of our road tests. Now on last week's show we reported on the recent launch in Lyon of the Renault T-Series. It was incredibly impressive, blowed everyone away. But aside from the glitz and glamour, does the truck itself prove to be just as spectacular? The Renault Premium and Magnum Tract Unit range have been familiar sights on Britain's roads over the last 15 to 20 years. But that's all changed now. There's a new kid on the block, and it's called the Renault T-Range. A completely new vehicle from the ground up, the Renault T has been designed and developed in close collaboration with 50 Renault customers around the world. And Renault say that before being brought to the market, the truck has been subject to the most extensive and thorough test in the company's history and that includes over 10 million kilometres of driving tests. The Renault T-Range is quite extensive. As I told you earlier, it covers both the Premium and the Magnum. But the vehicle we've got today is a 6x2, 460 brake horsepower. It's probably going to be Renault's best-selling vehicle. That's why we're going to take a road test with it. First impressions as I sit myself down here, set myself down in the seat, it's an almost perfect driving position. Having a quick look at the seat and a bit more detail, the one thing I do like, I know it's quite simple, but it's got heated seats and I really do like those a lot. 
but have a look inside. Now, this is one of the top of the range cabs. It's meant for drivers, maybe one driver or two drivers, to be out on the road, maybe three, four, five days a week. So you've got to have lots of space, and it certainly does have it. It's got an almost flat floor. I know I'm not a giant, but I can certainly stand up in here, no problem whatsoever. And it's got lots of cupboards, lots of space, lots of storage. That's what you want when you're away for two or three days at a time, four days at a time. Just above the driver's head, we've got the tachograph and we've also got the CD and radio player as well. Behind me, we've got a double bunk and I do like the nice touch. The little touch is like an integrated ladder. It saves a lot of space and that's important in a, a confined space as a, a truck cab. Down at the bottom here, a really nice thick bunk. I've not actually slept in it, but I did at the launch in Lyon. I managed to actually sneak a quick uh, lie down on it and it was very comfortable indeed. All of the T-Range have the latest Euro 6 spec engines and they range from an 11 litre 380 horsepower version to the top spec 13 litre 520 horsepower with the best seller expected to be the version we're testing today. Here we are, 460 horsepower, 11.8 litre engine. Uh, vehicle's pulling away, we're at 45 mile an hour, and we're in 12th gear and she's really looking low, 1100. This vehicle can actually, I think the, the stats actually say that at 56 miles an hour or 90 kph as we know, then it should be running around about 1,000, just under uh, 1,100 RPM at the maximum range. A little bit of wind noise from the mirror on the right hand side here, but apart from that, really, really nice, a very comfortable drive indeed. Seated position is excellent, as I said earlier on. And the good thing about this one as well is the steering rake and height adjustment is pneumatic and it's probably one of the better ones I've seen. A lot of the new generation are pneumatic. This one has got one of the best ones because it's got a really good full range and that's one of the things I did like about it. As far as dashboard layout is concerned, nice instrument panel a la the French in LCD, a lot more uh, LCD around and that's just the, the trend for the French and I can't blame them, I like it a lot. Semi wrapped round dashboard and as you know probably by now that's one of my favourite ways. It gives you good access to the bunk here but actually just feels you a little bit more comfortable in there. At the front of me here I've got the heating ventilation system and then at the side here cruise control. Oh, it's got the, not only the cruise control but the active cruise control. I think they call it the ACC. I'm sure it'll be Opti something uh, because the, uh, the Renault seems to have this thing about Opti drive, Opti this, Opti that, Opti flex, Opti eco. Up to everything. Uh, I'm sure they're in Opti for that one as well. And indeed, it does have Opti Driver automatic transmission, which is fitted as standard to all the Renault T models. I have to say, it's super smooth on the Millbrook flats, but to really test it, we need some hills. 460 horsepower and 44 tons, a typical sort of UK operation. Uh, as we pull away here, we're in ninth gear now and 28 mile an hour, we're down to about 14. There is a kick through on this, so you do have an ability just to, for what we need on here, the, the going up the hill, and she's pulling away nicely. You feel like you're catching it. The green zone here is between 1,000 and 1,500, and we're holding it there at 14, and she feels like she should hold it. I might drop, I'm in eighth now, I might drop maybe another gear, something like that. With peak power achieved at around 2,000 revs, the T certainly doesn't feel lacking in grunt, so it's thumbs up for the hill test. Now, going up the hill is one thing, coming down is the other. And here we've got a, a three-stage exhaust brake and engine brake, if you like, as well, and it really holds it. I'm down on the, the last stage, completely on maximum, I'm coming down here at 25, 26 mile an hour, and we're on about 1700 RPM. Maximum is about 300 kilowatts, which is around about the 400 horsepower that you can throw on there. And it's holding the vehicle at 44 tons without any problem whatsoever, and a very, very efficient uh, braking system. We don't want to use the service brakes. We really want to use the engine to slow the vehicle down. It's more efficient, more fuel efficient, and help save us on brake wear and things like that. So that's how, what, what we do on heavy trucks. There are actually three types of retarders available for the T-Range. And when you combine that with the host of power plants and a massive range of options inside the cab, you have a really good proposition for a wide range of applications. I think even the most ardent Renault truck fan will have to admit 
that Renault Trucks has played on the marginal side of the UK truck market up to now. But I think with the Renault T range, that could be about to change. Now, just as us car lads like to go on about what their favourite mark is, it's no different in the truck world. Tim, putting you on the spot, what's your favourite truck? Oh, it's so difficult. First of all, on the newer ones, because they're all brand new in this last 12 months, and I've not had a chance to drive all of them. But if I was going to say about it, it'd be a toss-up between two of them. A Bedford TM, believe it or not, because that's what I learned my truck, uh, to get my truck licence on, and then an ERF, because that's my first job on research and development. So I would say uh, ERF. And would that have been all manual gearbox and...? Yeah, 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 split your gearboxes, Gardner 180s, 240s, uh, fuller gearboxes, coastal back axles, all those sort of things, going back late 70s, 80s. And you say car lads are boring when we get on about what we're like. I know, I do like. normal. I can leave my off for you, to be honest. It's quite frightening. Do you think they did have more character back in the day? Yeah, I think they did, because you did a lot more work with them. Nowadays, the modern truck, you just get in it, put it into auto, and you drive it. On the, uh, my days with the RF and the B series and the C series, they, you had to actually drive it. You could play tunes on the gearbox. If you didn't get it right, it was cold, then it was a disaster. Right. Well, it is a question that you could ask until the cows come on, but we went out and asked some of the drivers here at T-Bay what really does float their boat when it comes to trucks and what they'd quite happily leave parked up in the truck stop. I have to be a Volvo. I just, I just think they're the best. I mean, they're really comfy, spacious. They're dead, quite luxurious inside. So when you're living in it, really, because that's what you're doing when you're in the distances, I think they're, they're definitely up there, they would be a Volvo. Daff. Through and through, Daff. Oh, I'd buy a Scania a V8 730. It has to be a Scanny. It's got to be. Because <laughs> uh, I've had quite a few of them. Uh, and it's just, the, the last one I had was just so quiet, you couldn't hardly hear it running. They're all the same, really. They're all roughly doing the same, you know. I think, uh, I think your Dafsa would, I would have thought, Dafsa won it best motors on road for comfort wise. They're not so bad on fuel. Volvo, FH, uh, 16. Uh, I like the Volvo. I always, I always liked the Volvo or the DAF. You know what I mean? XF. A Scania would prefer a Scania if, but they just can't be choosers. Well, that's it for this week on Truck World TV. But don't forget, you can have a look at our website at truckworldtv.co.uk. And this week's competition is a chance to win a jacket courtesy of DAF. See you next time. Truck World is the UK's only dedicated TV series for the road transport sector. If you are watching this and have a product or service that can help transport operators, then go to our website www.truckworldtv.co.uk to find out how easy and cost effective it is to advertise on Truck World TV. Isuzu Truck UK Limited, providing award-winning customer care.